I'm an artist. My wife will tell you, I love to paint. I could spend hours painting. I paint many pictures in my life. I do still life pictures sometimes. So I would look and set up a real life, still life situation. Then I would paint what I see on the canvas. And I would keep looking and I'd put a little bit of paint. I'd look again and I'd add to the picture as I keep looking. And in order for me to get on the canvas, what I see on the table, I have to keep looking at it. But there's something about an artist that people don't understand. Before the picture is on the canvas, the artist has already seen it there. Now, if any of you have artistic ability, you probably begin to learn this to be true. I could see things before they appear. That's what faith is. Well, the image on the canvas was created by the eyes that I was using to view the subject. Now, what did God look at when he made you in his image? God had to have something to look at. Well, the Bible says the word was in the beginning. In the beginning was the word. The word was with him. The same was in the beginning with God. In other words, the word, the word, oh, the word. What is a thought? A thought is a word. What is an image? An image is a word that have become a picture. God wanted to create something that would reveal his thinking. That's all. God wanted to make a species that would become his thoughts explained. So that when you wanted to know what God was thinking, all you had to do is run into a man or a woman. And the way they ruled, the way they dominated, the way they had love, the way they had authority, the way they had power, the way they had wisdom, the way they had understanding, you would say, man, I'd love to meet your daddy. Adam was created to show the picture, the image, the imagination of God's thoughts. That's why you were created. Adam failed God and the thoughts of God could no longer flow through him. So even though Adam may have still had some of the physical attributes, he didn't have the spiritual flow of thoughts. So he was lost in a world depending on his own intellect. And that's why education is so great today. Seems as if we can't do nothing without education. Why? Because man has learned and have come to depend on their own minds, not the mind of God and the mind of Christ. And now man has elevated education above revelation. And they're trying to solve the world's problems out of their own imaginations. And their imagination begins right where it ends, in their heads. Revelation is from God and God alone. The Bible says, no man can understand the thoughts of God except that man can spiritually discern them. Righteous imaginations get me excited. Let us turn then to Genesis chapter 6. And let's see what happened to man's beautiful imagination. Genesis 6 verse 5, these words are written there. And God saw the wickedness of man after he had sinned, that it was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. All of his imaginations are evil. So it must mean then we got an imagination problem. We got an image problem problem we got a bad self-image because we are bad we are born bad bible says we are born in sin so ain't nothing you could do to change your situation that's why you got to go to jesus and he'll change it for you colossians 1 15 let's read verse 14 in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of every creature Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So the only way for us to know what God looked like was to have an image of him, a picture. And ain't no wooden stone and metal God. Jesus is the image of God. He is the image of the invisible God. That means when God was making you, guess who he was looking at? Glory to God. There is the master artist of the creation. You understand me? And he's looking within himself at the word. Yeah, when he put the head on, he looked again, he put the nose on, he looked again, he put the moral character in there, he looked again, he put the spiritual attributes in there, he looked again, he put his love in there, he looked again, and he sees some forgiveness there, he put that there, he sees some faith, he put that there, he keep on creating me and you. Then when he finished, he looked back and he said, it is good. And Adam got up, I believe, and Adam shook off all the little dust that was on him. He couldn't tell the difference between him and Jesus. His spiritual nature was so much like God until when the devil ran into him. I believe the devil went, oops, sorry, Jesus. Didn't even know that was Adam. 
made in the image of God. Well, I want to share something with you then. If we have the image of God, we're going to go a little bit deep now. Turn over to St. John chapter 1. St. John chapter 1 is a very powerful passage. As a matter of fact, this is something the Holy Ghost revealed to me and He revealed it to you too because it's so simple. First verse, in the beginning was the Word. Let's stop there a second. Underline the word, Word. What is a thought? Thought is an unspoken word. So in the beginning was God's thought. God had himself a picture on the inside. But nobody could know what he was thinking or what he was seeing because he was just imagining. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Now the Word was with him all along. God, the Bible says before the earths were created, God had predestinated to create you in Jesus. God had a thought long before you were thinking. Matter of fact, you are a result of his thinking. Adam messed up and he lost the flow of God's image and he couldn't receive the fellowship. God couldn't give him his pictures anymore. You know, God would just give him a thought and the Lord would turn on the TV in the spirit and Adam would see the whole picture of the imagination. Like Jesus would walk up to the blind man and, and the Lord would say, see that picture? His eyes are open. And Jesus would walk up to the blind man and lay his hands on him and says, your eyes are open. And the people said, how did you do that? He says, I just do what I see my father do. What a strange answer. Jesus is the word. Verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, the word, and without him was not anything made that was made, the word. Look down at verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we looked upon his glory as of the glory of the only begotten son of the father, full, overflowing, packed with abundant grace and truth. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Let me tell you something. Before Jesus came, we did not know what God was thinking. We had some idea through the prophets, but we didn't know what God was really thinking. But then God began to not just speak anymore. Listen now. God's word became flesh. A word is a spoken thought. Any word you speak had to be a thought first. Except you're speaking in tongues. And if you're doing that, it's God's thoughts. Every word you speak was a thought first. And the only way people can know that thought is if you speak it. So Jesus... Here he was, God wanted to tell the human race, I love you, I want to save you, I want to heal you, I want to bless you, I want to reconcile you, I want to restore you, I want to give you life, I want to give you eternal life. But suppose God just sat in heaven and thought that. We'd still be in a sorry situation today. You know, you can sit in that chair all day and look at me and think, and nothing will happen. Thinking does not produce until it is spoken. So God had the word in the beginning, but now he wanted to speak his thoughts and his thoughts, which became words, became flesh. Now, when I give you my words, then what's the result? I know what you're thinking, you'd say. The image of God, the picture thought of God came out and it became flesh. And now we have walked in the streets of Nazareth and the hills of Galilee. We got the thoughts of God dressed in clothes, walking around on two feet. That's all you see, walking around. You want to know what God's thinking about sickness? Watch the thought. The word goes up there and touches the sick. All of a sudden the sick becomes healed. And then you say, oh, that's what God's thinking about sickness, is it? Then you see the dead laying in the grave. And the thought of God walks up to the coffin of that poor little boy. And the water of God begins to flow in the spirit. And the word of God says, here's what God's thinking. Arise. And the little kid came out of the casket. If you want to know what God's thinking, look at his word. Jesus is the image, the picture, the expressed thought, the word of God. Righteous imagination.